old well that child knew how to suck and <laughs> she did she did I feel like since I've opened up viewer recommendations for stories again, y'all are just trying to bring out angry old Phil again. Okay, let's do this. Sup, you beautiful bastards. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. Hit that like button, otherwise we'll punch you in the throat. And let's just jump into it. And so first up, easily one of the most requested stories yesterday. Yes, I do look at the comments. Let's talk about this Millie Bobby Brown situation. Right, so if you're unfamiliar, she and a TikToker by the name of Hunter Ekimovic, uh, they were spotted together last year when Millie was 16, he was 20, and there were reports that they were dating. Right, but that's kind of where it ended. Time passed, but then on Monday night, clips from an Instagram Live that he did started getting spread on social media where he discussed their alleged relationship. At one point, he read a comment from someone who accused him of grooming Millie, and then he agreed with it. Imagine being a grown adult and dating a, a kid. Groomer, I know, I groomed it. Also making sexual comments as well. Well, that all knew how to suck and <laughs> <laughs> She did. She did. She knew how to suck that <laughs> And eat that <laughs> so I'll tell you that. She ate that <laughs> and suck that then later, seemingly getting defensive butt, saying he's not sorry for their relationship. You guys don't know that. You guys do not know the story of anything. And I will never apologize. I hope you know that. I have nothing to apologize for. Also with this adding. There's no lawsuit at all. I was living in Millie's house for eight months. How the fuck is there a lawsuit? Her, film, her mom and dad knew about everything. And so these clips blew up for all the reasons you would think they blew up. And mainly a lot of disgust and anger. And it actually got to the point where Millie's reps had to give a statement to the Daily Beast last night regarding this. Saying that Hunter's remarks on social media are not only dishonest, but also are irresponsible, offensive, and hateful. And adding, instead of engaging in a public discourse with him through the press or on social media, we are taking action to ensure that he stops this behavior once and for all. But the Daily Beast also saying that those reps didn't specify what those actions would be, nor did they confirm or deny if Millie was ever in a relationship with him. Now, as far as Hunter's response to all of this after the fact, uh, we've heard this in a million different stories. He said that he was drunk, also apologizing for the live stream, but then also adding a caption that said that a four year age gap is not a big deal, claiming that he never groomed her or put pressure on her. But also with that, as you can imagine, there are people still outraged and calling him out. And so with this story, especially because it was one of the most requested, I wanna pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts on this? Or both his argument that a 20 year old and a 16 year old, there's not a big deal there. And just the, the whole situation in general. Because as far as my opinion on this, and I don't even want to get into the legality because it gets like murky. Like if he was living in the UK with her, the age of consent there is 16. But if it happened in California, the age of consent here is 18. But like a drunk or not, who jokes about grooming a child, you disgusting motherfucker? Like even without her having been 16, you expose yourself as a disgusting dirtbag. But this is, a, I, I know that I'm 35, but this is a child. That's how you're talking about a 16 year old girl as a grown ass adult? Anyway, uh, that's where I'm gonna end it before I say something that gets me into trouble. Uh, I pass the question off to you. What are your thoughts on this? You can agree with me, you can disagree with me. This is the Philip DeFranco Show, but no matter what, I wanna hear from you. Then we had Zendaya in the news over the battle of the boobs. Which is kind of a joke, but also exactly spot on. And this, because Zendaya is in the new Space Jam, a new legacy film, and she and director Malcolm D. Lee spoke to Entertainment Weekly. And the topic of Lola Bunny's image change comes up, right? She's a uh, less Playboy Bunny, now more athletic Bunny. And you had both of them saying they're kind of shocked about all the outrage around this, with Lee saying, I had no idea that people would be up in arms about a bunny not having boobs. Listen, I understand people don't want things to change, but I think we needed some evolution with her. Not by objectifying her, but by making her strong and still feminine. And yes, we had all these other women who were like, oh, you can't be strong and have big boobs? Sure you can, but we're talking about a cartoon bunny, not women. Though, you did also see Zendaya kind of playing it smart, saying she gets where the outrage is coming from, saying I didn't know that was going to happen, but I understand because she's a lovable character. She's very important, so I get it. She's special to a lot of people and their childhoods and they've been able to grow up with her, so I get that sense of protection. But if I can jump in here and just very quickly address the people that are just not happy that they're no longer sexually attracted to Lola Bunny here. Y'all, the internet exists. Y'all really need Lola Bunny to be busty to jerk it? This is a children's movie. She can still look however you want her to look on other websites. Those websites are still gonna exist and I know that one in 10 of you just opened up another tab, you pervert. And if anything, maybe you should be thankful because I bet this is going to lead to a surge 
of new Lola Bunny content. Then, in the latest update in the really disgusting and messy Britney Spears situation, the ACLU is now involved, announcing yesterday that they filed an amicus brief in the Superior Court of LA, requesting that Britney Spears be allowed to select her own attorney in her conservatorship case. Also asking that the court ensure Spears has access to assistance and tools, including supported decision-making to make this choice. And an ACLU staff attorney added, Spears' right to select an attorney is not only a basic tenet of the Sixth Amendment right to counsel, but also consistent with principles of personal autonomy and age the California Superior Court must recognize Spears' autonomy and the rights of people with disabilities to live independent, self-directed lives as active members of their communities. The ACLU also announcing that they filed a separate document offering to help Britney in this process if she wants. And it's notably coming on the date we've been talking about, July 14th, right? Britney's conservatorship case is back in court today. There's a whole list of things on the docket. So we're gonna have to keep our eyes open and wait to see what happens later today. But from that, let's take a second to pay some bills and thank the fantastic sponsor of today's show, Squarespace. You know, over the past year, many of you you have found your passion projects and what truly makes you happy. Whether that means finally getting your independent business off the ground or creating a place to share your homemade goods, new favorite hobby, obsession, or maybe even just getting a personal blog to get all those thoughts out of your head and Squarespace is there to help. And it's all so easy. There's nothing to install, patch, or upgrade ever. And creating a beautiful website with Squarespace's all-in-one platform has never been so simple. It's extremely intuitive and easy to use. Plus, with Squarespace, you get access to all their marketing tools and analytics and personalized support from their award-winning customer care team via email or live chat. Whatever you need, they are available 24-7 to help out. So if you want to check it out, see why so many others love it, go ahead and start your free trial today over at squarespace.com slash Phil. And when you realize you love it, make sure you enter an offer code Phil to get 10% off your first purchase. Then, you know, yesterday we talked about fire NATOs and it feeling like the earth is just trying to kill us right now. Well, uh, it appears that the earth has an accomplice and that is the moon. And I say that because there's this new study from NASA and the University of Hawaii that's warning that there's this so-called wobble in the moon's orbit that could lead to record flooding on Earth starting in the mid 2030s. Now, some of the details, this lunar wobble is actually a natural occurrence that scientists first reported in 1728. It takes 18.6 years to complete. And according to NASA, you need to think of this as two halves. In the first half, high tides are lower than normal, low tides are higher than normal. But then everything gets amplified. High tides get higher and low tides get lower. You know, like I said, this is naturally occurring, but science Scientists this time around are worried because of the sea level rise we've seen with climate change. With scientists expecting the next high tide floods to be more intense and more frequent than before. And to kind of give you an idea of what we're talking about, in 2019, scientists reported more than 600 of these floods, and now they expect three to four times that amount in the mid 2030s. Are you talking about significant infrastructure damage, whole communities being displaced? Then, and it's probably doomed, but it's exciting and interesting to see it actually happening. This morning, you had Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, along with two other Senate Democrats, rolling out draft legislation that would decrease criminalize marijuana federally. And in addition to removing marijuana from the Controlled Substances Act, the draft bill would expunge records for nonviolent federal cannabis convictions and allow those serving times to petition a court for resentencing, create grant and loan programs to help socially or economically disadvantaged individuals as well as those harmed by the war on drugs, institute a federal excise tax like the one on alcohol and tobacco, and use that money to fund restorative justice programs and medical research, transfer regulation from the Drug Enforcement Agency to other federal agencies, give marijuana businesses operating in states where it is legal access to the U.S. banking system and prevent the federal government from discriminating against cannabis users seeking federal housing or food benefits, security clearances, or citizenship. But very notably here, the bill would not legalize marijuana federally, but rather allow states to then set their own rules, including prohibiting the drug in most cases. But like I said, unless there are some surprises, this is probably dead on arrival. Right? if you look to the Senate, many Republicans, including some from states that legalize marijuana, they oppose federal legalization, as do some moderate Democrats. Also, hey, who knows? Is anything's possible. I mean, where we are with marijuana now compared to 20 years ago, drastically different, right? Medical marijuana is legal in the majority of US states. Recreational use is legal in 18 states and DC. And recent polling suggests that almost 70% of Americans support legalizing marijuana. Then, and possibly the perfect follow-up story, we should talk about drug overdoses. And that is because according to provisional data from the CDC, deaths from drug overdoses in the US rose by nearly 30% in 2020. Right, we're talking about a record high of 93,331, which is a figure that represents the sharpest annual increase in at least three decades. And while we saw increased deaths from methamphetamine and cocaine, the driving force behind this spike was the use of opioids. Which I think one is very concerning news. I really think that it showcases the, the pandemic, uh, social isolation, anxiety, job losses, other stress factors. But also two, just a reminder to Franco 2024. If you want the rich corporate soulless motherfuckers that, that pray on society, like these guys that get fined because they pushed and lied and misled about opioids. If you want them to stop, a fine is never gonna do it. That is the cost of business. But if you vote me in, I will work 
my butt off to change the laws so that I can kneecap these motherfuckers on TV. And yeah, along with that, we'll find the company. Maybe we'll even sell the event as a pay-per-view, use that money to help all the lives they've helped ruin. Then we should only talk about the police arresting former Seahawks and 49ers cornerback Richard Sherman this morning on the suspicion of burglary, domestic violence, though he hasn't yet been officially charged. There's reportedly booked 6 a.m. local time. He's being held at the King County Correctional Facility in Seattle without bail. Though, to be clear, that's standard for domestic violence suspects until they can appear before a judge. Now, as far as the details with this, while they're scarce as of recording, uh, we do know police told ESPN that they got a 911 call from the home around two o'clock in the morning. The caller is saying that an adult family member who didn't live there was trying to force his way in. And then when the police arrived, they said that they found the suspect outside the home. And after a scuffle, he was arrested and taken to a hospital before being booked. With police also adding that no one at the home was injured. We've also since learned, thanks to an interview between TMZ and Washington State Police, that it was actually a canine that took down Sherman at the home. And that prior to making it to that home while driving, Sherman allegedly hit a barrier in a construction zone and then still drove the car despite pop tires away from the area. So with that, state police are also reportedly investigating him for a possible hit and run DUI. For now though, we're still waiting to see if Sherman gets charged, right? If he does and is later convicted, it would be a felony. Though with that earlier today, we saw Sherman's wife speaking out, emphasizing the fact that no one got hurt and saying he's a good person and this is not his character. We're doing all right, just trying to get him out. I want people to know no one was injured. But ultimately with this story or honestly anything else that stood out to you today, I'd love to know your thoughts in those comments down below because yes, this is a new show, but this is also supposed to be a conversation, which as always, thank you for being a part of. Hit that like button, subscribe, all the good stuff. And of course, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you tomorrow.